Welcome to a view to a grill. I'm Johnny. Today we're going to be doing a smoked then reverse seared whole tenderloin on the Weber kettle. I'll be taking you through the whole process from start to finish from trimming up the whole beef tenderloin all the way through the reverse sear. Let's prepare our whole beef tenderloin. I'm going to be using my Dow Strong 6 inch Shogun series uh, fillet knife and the reason why is because it has this really incredibly sharp point and that's going to make it easy for me to get under the silver skin. Cut the top of the package so that it'll make it easier for me to lift the whole tenderloin without spilling any of the juices. I'll get a paper towel and pat it dry simply because I think a dry tenderloin is easier to work with at this point. We'll be removing all of the fat and silver skin from the top of this beef tenderloin. And then we'll simply lift it straight out of the package and put the side that we just patted dry down on the cutting board. Now right here along the side of the beef tenderloin you can see where the chain separates from the main part of the tenderloin. And up here at the thick end of the tip of the tenderloin you can kind of see this bulging meat and that is the roast. Now we'll get the underside pat it dry then turn it back over you can see there's a layer of fat and under that is a layer of silver skin we're going to be removing all of this i'll start by taking off the top layer of fat and that is going to expose the chain now you can see how easy this chain is to remove from the rest of the tenderloin as long as you expose it first all you have to do is kind of pull it apart and tap a sharp knife on the connective tissue and it just wants to come apart by itself. Now once you get to the thick end of the tenderloin you will have to use your knife to cut that out. Just lift it up, cut along the seam and it comes off very easily. Now don't throw the chain away. It's got some good meat on it. It's gonna take a little effort to clean it up, but it's good stuff. Just set it to the side. Now the tip is gonna have some silver skin connected to the underside. I'll just get that turned over and trimmed off. And now we can start taking the silver skin off the top of the tenderloin. I'll just start on the tip of the silver skin toward the middle of the tenderloin, cut under it and create this little tab. What this little tab is going to do is allow me to hold on to it, get the knife under the silver skin, and just peel it off. And then I'll just repeat the process until all the silver skin is gone. We're not going to take the roast off, but I do want to take off as much of the silver skin as possible. So I'll go down in this crease just enough to leave the roast attached, but I'll take off as much of the silver skin that I can. And now we'll just feel around the tenderloin and cut off anything that feels hard or anything that you don't want to eat. As far as the top part goes, we're done trimming that up and you should have something that looks like this. Now towards the thin end, we're gonna wanna cut that tip off because it gets a little bit too thin to really cook properly. Feel around, I usually take about a hand's width off. Now we'll get that cut off and set it to the side. Now let's turn it over and get the underside of the whole beef tenderloin trimmed. I'll just use my fillet knife to start shaving off some of that harder fat. And while you're doing this, you wanna feel it to make sure that you're getting all of the harder fat off. Now, once you get done shaving off the hard fat on the bottom side, kind of feel around, make sure everything feels tender, get it turned back over and give it a final inspection. Feel around, make sure that you didn't miss anything. If you missed anything, go ahead and get that trimmed off. And now we're gonna need some butcher's twine to tie it up. I'll start on the thick end of the whole beef tenderloin and just use a butcher's knot topped off with a square knot to get it secure. When you're measuring for your second wrap, kind of judge it so that you have a few wraps around the roast and the main part of the tenderloin just to keep them together during the cook. Now I'll get that measured off and tied off. Now my third wrap, I'm gonna make sure that that's still on the roast section of the beef tenderloin. Get that wrapped and tied. And then I'm just gonna repeat this process all the way down to the end of the beef tenderloin. Now if you're wondering why we tie it off, well we tie it off number one to keep it all together. 
And number two, if you look at the piece that I cut off, it's fairly thin and it looks nothing like a steak. So tying it off gets us this round shape that kind of makes it a little thicker and allows this end of the beef tenderloin to cook a little more evenly. Now that it's all tied up, we're going to salt it for the dry brine. I'm going to put what I consider a lot of salt on this beef tenderloin. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Now just get it on a rack and on a sheet pan into the refrigerator for at least 24 hours. It has been 24 hours and now it's time to cook our whole beef tenderloin. We'll get it out of the refrigerator and onto the counter and just kind of let it rest on the counter. Take a look at how dark the beef tenderloin got overnight. The tenderloin is also dry to the touch. While the beef tenderloin is sitting out on the counter, it's a great time to prepare the Weber kettle. My setup today will be the Craycourt cast iron grill grates and the slow and sear. I also have a little bit of leftover charcoal from the last cook. I'll fill up two thirds of the slow and sear with some Kingsford blue. I'll also be using three chunks of oak. I like to put my wood under the charcoal. If you want, you can throw it right on top. I honestly don't think it makes a difference, but I'll get that under the charcoal and covered up. And now I'll get about, I don't know, 14, 16 briquettes into a chimney starter and get that going. While the fire is getting started, I'll clean up my grill and set up my ThermalWorks Signals thermometer. And now it is time to season our whole beef tenderloin. Today I will be using savory spice flat iron prime rib rub as my seasoning. I've already used this a few times. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen some pictures that I posted of a prime rib and of a different tenderloin a few weeks ago. And it's good stuff. As you can see, this will be the last time for this bottle. I'll spray it with a little duck fat, get that rubbed around evenly, and then very liberally season the underside of the beef tenderloin. Now I like to season the underside first so that when I turn it over and set it down on the rack, I don't have to move it again. And now I'll repeat that process on the top side, making sure that every portion of this beef tenderloin is seasoned well. The good thing about leaving the roast on is that this end is gonna be thicker while the other end is thinner. As the tenderloin cooks, you can cook the thick end to a medium rare, which will naturally take the thin end all the way down to medium. Our fire is ready, and now it's time to get it into the slow and sear. We'll just get our lit charcoal poured in. Next, we'll put our whole beef tenderloin, leave it on the rack, and put that on the indirect side of the grill. Now we'll get our internal temperature probe in the thickest part of the beef tenderloin. Now I scraped a little bit of the seasoning off with my finger, so I wanna touch that back up. My target range is between 240 and 250 for this cook, but I got a five degree window on either side that I won't be mad at. Now let's get the lid closed and bring this up to temp. Now, since I started off with clean burning fuel, I don't mind doing it this way. If you started the fire in the Weber kettle, then of course you're going to want to let that smoke clear up. But we started our fire in the chimney starter. The fire was already burning clear. So I don't mind putting the lid on at this point. While we're bringing our temperature up, I'll start off with the top vent wide open and I'll have the bottom vent wide open as well. Now if you're wondering how I bring my Weber kettle up to temp, I have a video where I show you my method of bringing up the Weber kettle to temp. And if you want to see that, check out the video above. After a while, we're sitting at 241. I'll make one final adjustment just to maintain our temperature. Today, for some reason, there really weren't a lot of temperature adjustments today. Everything was going extremely well, which makes me extremely happy. Once you reach your target temperature on a cook like this, there is very little to do. As a matter of fact, I am not going to open the lid until I get to an internal temperature of 110 degrees. There is absolutely no need to open the lid if you're maintaining your target temperature. Now we've reached our internal temperature of 110 degrees. Let's get the lid off and take a look. 
and I'm very happy with the way this looks and feels. The exterior is dry, the bark has set, so we know that the seasoning has adhered to our beef tenderloin, which makes this a lot easier. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open your bottom vent wide open because we need to get our fire hot. Now, as far as the beef tenderloin, you can either take it off and set it to the side or just leave it on the indirect side of the grill while the fire is getting hot. If you have a grill blazer grill gun, you don't have to wait for the rest of those coals to get started. You can just use your grill blazer grill gun to get those all lit in about two or three minutes. Fire's going pretty well, but I still want to mix up the coals a little bit just to make sure that the heat is distributed evenly. Now I'll get my grate down, clean up any of the ash that has settled on the other grill grates, let the grill grate come up to temperature, and begin my sear. I like to spray a little oil on the grates and a little oil on the tenderloin as well. Now I'll just get the tenderloin on the grill. Now I'm just rolling it on. I don't want to knock off any seasoning. And to make this part truly easy, I like to glove up. I'll use uh, cotton glove inserts, and then over that, I'll use my nitrile gloves. Now this makes your hands kind of heat resistant, but that nitrile will melt if you get it too hot. So be really careful if you do it this way. Otherwise, just use uh, tongs and a spatula. Now this is a 12 second time lapse of an eight minute process that I used to sear this whole beef tenderloin. I moved it around, not letting it stay on one spot for very long until I got to the color I liked. I want the final temperature of this to be going in to medium, okay? So that's in the high 130s. If you want yours to be medium rare at 122, then that's when you'll take yours off because the residual heat will bring that in to the 130s, which is medium rare. But for me, I gotta leave it in a little bit longer. Now we're at 128 and the residual heat should get me in to the upper 130 degree range. And that's gonna be exactly where I like it and where my family likes it. And just take a look at this thing while it's on the grill. That is a beautiful sight. That is some good looking meat right there. And now all we have to do is let it rest until basically it gets to the temperature you're like. It took about another 10, 12 minutes for it to get to 135 degrees internal temp. By the time I get this on a plate and ready to cut, it should be about 138, 139 degrees exactly where I want it. It's time to take a look at the results of all of our hard work. I'll just get this cut straight down as best as I can and take a look at the inside. For me and my family, that is the perfect whole beef tenderloin. Now, let's get it a taste. And you're never gonna get tired of that. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching A View to a Grill, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, y'all.